They say size doesn't matter, and when it comes to animals, that's 10,000% true. Because despite being small, insects can cause serious damage. Mm. With just a teeny little nibble, some of them can unleash gargantuan amounts of pain. These are the 20 most painful insect bites in the world. Number 20, Asian Giant Hornet. So, what's it like to get stung by an Asian Giant Hornet, also known as Vespa mandarinia? Well, it's excruciating, like being stabbed by a red-hot needle. That's according to our guy Justin Schmidt, who invented the Schmidt scale for measuring insect sting pain, and the pain does not go away quickly. The affected area tends to swell a lot, and it can hurt for several days. While you might experience similar symptoms from other hornets, the Vespa mandarinia is reportedly much worse. People are buzzing right now about the painful stings of two giant hornets recently found in Washington state. These bugs have earned the nickname murder hornets on social media. While there's concern they could spread, so far they haven't been found too widely in the US. But this raises questions. What makes the Asian giant hornet sting unique? How toxic is its venom? According to Schmidt, who's researched hornets by letting them sting the heck out of them, the toxicity of the giant hornet and some of its relatives is notably high. Let's compare them to honeybees. They can only sting once, and their venom is actually less potent than giant hornets. In contrast, the venom from a giant hornet is about 10 times stronger, and they can sting as many times as they want. So basically, this critter is a total monster, stacking up at over 1.5 inches long. So are you surprised it packs such a potent punch? Oh, if you don't want an army of stinging insects crawling up your pant leg, you better hit like and subscribe to the channel like right now. Number 19, Red Fire Ant. Contrary to popular belief, the fire ant, or Solenopsis invecta, isn't native to the US. They were accidentally imported from South America in the 1930s. Since then, these ants have been on the march like a vast but tiny red army. Now they've conquered the southern US and they've been spotted as far north as Virginia. But northwest Florida, with its mild climate, is particularly well suited for these ants. The colonies that they build look like dirt domes, and these mounds can get really big, up to 3 feet wide and 18 inches tall. A mature colony can host up to 500,000 ants, which makes them hard to avoid. Now, you might think that fire ants bite, but it's actually their sting that delivers the venom. Their strong jaws latch onto the skin, and then a sharp stinger does the job. Unlike honeybees, fire ants can sting more than once. In fact, a single ant will typically sting three times before it's dislodged. The potency of their venom is highest during summer, making stings more frequent and painful then. After a sting, you'll see a swollen red mark that generally fades within about an hour. But within 24 hours, pimple-like pus-filled spots appear. Over the next two to three days, these spots can break open and cause itching, pain, and swelling. Fortunately, these reactions usually resolve on their own without leading to severe complications. Number 18, Paper Wasp. Paper wasps have long legs and belong to the Vespid family, meaning they can sting. Their bodies are usually a mix of reddish brown to black, accented with yellow spots. Generally, they measure between 5 eighths and 3 fourths inches long. They earn their name paper wasps by scraping wood off of structures to create paper-like umbrella-shaped nests. Although their bite does pack a punch, paper wasps are generally less aggressive than the European wasps. They usually only become a problem if you disturb their nest. However, getting stung multiple times could lead to a more severe reaction. While allergic reactions to stings from wasps, bees, or ants are relatively rare, they can be very serious. If you know that you're allergic, carrying a special treatment kit outdoors is a great idea. Immunotherapy is also available to lessen the severity of an allergy. In Australia, seven people have from wasp stings in the past two decades, often because they didn't have their allergy medication handy. To manage the pain from a sting, a cold pack can be pretty effective. If there's a sign of a severe reaction, or if the person stung knows they're allergic to wasp venom, immediate medical attention is crucial. If you're hoping to avoid a showdown with these mulch-making critters, just stay away from their nests. 
Also, wearing shoes outdoors can protect you, just in case you accidentally step on one. Number 17. Suitoring Army Ant They're skilled builders, forming massive, intricately organized colonies that boggle the mind. Some even argue they're among the best builders ever, and they also help decompose dead wood and enrich the soil. Though small, ants have a big impact. Historical records from Neolithic times, around 12,000 years ago, indicate that ants were used for medicinal purposes. Before ant farms or concerns about ant hills filled with biters, people used to use ants to suture open wounds. Here's how it works. Grab an army ant just behind its head, and it'll open its mandibles wide. Carefully position one mandible on each side of the cut, and the ant will naturally clamp down to defend itself, effectively piercing the enemy. To keep the wound closed, the ant's head is severed while it's still clamped on, essentially serving as a makeshift pin. Ecaton burchelli, a species from Central and South America, is commonly used this way. According to the Schmidt Pain Index, these tiny warriors cause a pain level of 1.5, comparable to getting stitched up with a rusty needle. While it's tempting to let these backyard helpers do the healing, medical professionals don't recommend it. Given the lack of guidelines for keeping this method sanitary, you're better off using store-bought band-aids for open wounds. Plus, as you're walking around talking to people, having a colorful bandage is way better than a severed ant head that they're going to ask you all kinds of questions about. Number 16. Giant Bornean Carpenter Bee The tropical carpenter bee is a little flying menace that lives in Southeast Asia and thrives in warm tropical forests. This bee's quite the carpenter, digging holes in trees to create nests. You'll often find their long, deep tunnels in wooden rafters, fallen trees, and telephone poles, but not in live trees. Among the world's largest bees, it has a mouse-sized black body and eye-catching iridescent purple wings. Despite its imposing size, it's not particularly aggressive. When it does sting, the pain registers at a 2.5 on the Schmidt scale, described as engaging, sharp, and piercing. This bee has a unique look, especially when it's perched on a flower. Its robust black body contrasts beautifully with its metallic wings, which can shimmer in hues ranging from blue-green to gold to purple and pink. In the right light, these guys are almost magical in appearance. Economically, these bees are put to work in the Philippines for pollinating passion fruit flowers. In other parts of Southeast Asia, like Indonesia and Malaysia, they naturally perform the same function. Interestingly, tropical carpenter bees and a specific type of passion fruit flower, known as Passiflora edulis flavicarpa, have been observed to bloom simultaneously. Number 15. Bulldog Ant the 89 species of bull ants in Australia are generally pretty laid back, which might be surprising if you've ever been stung by one. However, if their colony or queen is threatened, they won't hesitate to charge from their mound to confront the intruder. Bull ants are among the few ant types that have vision. Mostly, they keep to themselves, and they won't bother you unless you get in their way. If you do get in their way, you might find yourself in a tight spot rather quickly. <laughs> When a bull ant gets mad, it uses a sting near its abdomen to inject venom, not a bite. They can bite, but it's more of a superficial nibble. That venom is a real cocktail, and we're not talking about mojitos here, guys. Instead, it's a dangerous mix of various proteins, histamines, and other chemicals. When these elements mix with a person's immune response, the result is usually pretty unpleasant. One reason bull ant stings can be so intense is their size. They're larger than other ants, and therefore they can inject more venom. And again, unlike bees which sting once before dying, bull ants can sting multiple times. The toxicity level of bull ant venom is disproportionate to the size of their usual foes, including humans, small marsupials, and even dogs. Number 14. Glorious Velvet Ant these guys may be teensy tiny, given that they're less than an inch long, but velvet ants pack a serious heat when it comes to survival. These critters are actually a type of wasp, despite their name. So maybe we count that as their first defense, masters of disguise. The females, who are wingless, have bright red or orange fuzzy hair. This can lend them an ant-like appearance. They're often called cow because their stings are incredibly painful. And yeah, it's not just a name, they are believed to even huge cows. But a painful sting isn't their only defense mechanism. 
They also have an exoskeleton that acts like a tank, and instead of firing missiles, they release a gross odor. On top of that, the predators that eat invertebrates can't seem to crack the tough exterior of the female velvet ant. The round shape of their bodies also seems to deter predators. Any attempt to bite or sting usually misses the mark. And they can even make a squealing noise by rubbing two parts of their abdomen together. These multiple defenses might have evolved to protect them inside the wasp and bee nest that they infiltrate. However, these features also come in handy in the great outdoors, where they seem to have few natural enemies capable of taking them down. Number 13, Hairy Panther Ant. The hairy panther ant calls southern Texas, Mexico, and other areas around their home. It's one of the largest ants in North America, and it is noticeable for its fine body hairs. Damn, that ant's body hair is fine! No, I mean like thin. The ant's mouth parts are quite prominent, and they can latch onto various insects, sometimes multiple at once. If you encounter one, it's better to steer clear. It has a painful stinger located at its abdomen's tip. Its colonies are super fortified and well protected, so when walking in tropical forests, watch your step. Their sting is majorly painful, one of the most intense in the animal kingdom. Unlike other ants that release formic acid, this species has a whole other modus operandi. This little guy will grab onto your skin, bite it, and then sting you. This causes pretty much immediate pain and swelling. And the venom has been found to have a variety of unpleasant effects. It cells, breaks down blood vessels, eliminates microbes, let's just say it doesn't do you any good. The hairy panther ant doesn't always rely on its stinger when hunting or evading predators, but you don't want to be around when it decides to go nuclear. Number 12, Western Yellow Jacket Wasp. Managing yellow jacket stings usually involves over-the-counter remedies or treatments you can do at home. However, if you're allergic, you'll need immediate medical attention. Always have an EpiPen ready. Yellow jackets are slender wasps, easily noticed by their black and yellow color scheme. Unlike bees, which only sting once, which we talk about a lot here, yellow jackets can sting multiple times, and when they do, their stinger pierces your skin and releases venom, causing immediate pain. After a sting, it's common to experience pain, warmth, or swelling near the affected area. Some symptoms may require immediate medical attention. One quick home remedy is to apply meat tenderizer to the sting site. The idea behind this is that a meat tenderizer contains an enzyme called papain, also found in papaya, which might help break down venom proteins. But take this advice with a grain of salt. There's limited research to back it up, and what does exist is inconclusive. But definitely avoid scratching the sting site to prevent further infection or swelling. As an alternative, you can dab the area with a cotton ball soaked in a bit of vinegar to act as an astringent. Number 11, Jack Jumper Ants. If you're allergic to stinging ants, the reaction can be severe, even leading to anaphylaxis. In Australia, the jack jumper ants, also known as jumpers, hoppers, or skipper ants, are unique in causing allergies. Other ant species, like the green ant of Queensland and the imported South American fire ant, can also trigger sensitivities. Most of Australia's biting ants belong to the genus Myrmechia, which includes two primary types, bulldog ants and jack jumper ants. The ant most frequently responsible for allergic reactions is the jack jumper ant. These ants have a black exterior and an orange or brown interior. Unlike bees and wasps, they don't bite. Instead, they use their jaws to grab onto you and then they bend their body to deliver a sting from their rear end. Known for their aggressive behavior, they often hop as they walk and they can even leap from nearby plants. The stings from jack jumper ants are not just painful, they can also cause localized swelling that may persist for days. Anaphylaxis is a life-threatening condition that can occur after exposure to an allergen, whether it's food, insects, or medication, especially if you're already highly sensitive to it. If you have a severe allergic reaction to insect stings or bites, several serious symptoms could manifest. Number 10, Trap Jaw Ant. Wondering which animal has the fastest jaw snap? If you're thinking sharks or alligators, you're thinking too big. Meet the trap jaw ant, or Odontomachus borai, which resides in Central and South America. Its mandibles move at speeds ranging from 115 to 207 feet per second. 
To put it another way, the ant's jaws close at a speed of 78 to 145 miles per hour. That's a jaw action 2,300 times faster than the blink of a human eye. In the animal kingdom, it's well known that a bite from a trap jaw ant isn't just fast, it's even potent enough to be deadly. Unlike typical jaws, which use muscle power to open and close, the trap jaw operates more like a wound up spring. The ants need speed, especially when their main prey are springtails, which have their own spring-loaded mechanisms for escaping. This is a legit snapping arms race on a teeny tiny scale. Number 9. Warrior Wasp Names like honey and bumble sound cute for bees, but terms like executioner and warrior add a bit more edge when it comes to wasps, and there's a good reason for that. Warrior wasps, found in Central and South America, certainly live up to their name with aggressive behaviors like flapping their wings and generating a war drum sound by scraping their jaws inside their nests. These wasps are native to humid rainforests in these regions, and they've gained attention due to their traumatically painful stings. The main species of warrior wasp was actually discovered far away on Sulawesi, an island in Indonesia. In fact, a bunch of researchers even cooked up the perfect nickname for this monster, calling them Komodo dragons due to their ninja-style jaws. Males in this species can measure up to two and a half inches long. These wasps have a reputation for being particularly aggressive, and they're protective of their nesting areas. Some will even create a loud buzzing sound with their wings if they feel threatened. Their jaws are longer than their front legs, contributing to a sting that can cause pain for up to two hours. So how about that pain index by Schmidt? He's a professor, scientist, or perhaps just a madman who willingly subjected himself to stings from 150 different insects. Then he rated their pain on a scale of 1 to 4, 4 being the worst. On Schmidt's scale, the warrior wasp scores a perfect 4 out of 4, telling you all you need to know about just how painful this sting can be. Number 8. Bullet Ant Bullet ants call the tropical forests of Central and South America home. Unlike many other ants, they tend to build their nests in the ground, and they can live in groups of around 3,000. That's a pretty massive number for an ant colony. Because of the large size of their communities, they're a tempting target for bigger animals who know that such ant mounds are full of larvae, pupae, and adult ants. What makes bullet ants really stand out is their size and bustling activity. These guys are like a living city on the move. However, they have their limitations. They can't fly or jump to escape predators. So their main survival strategy boils down to a sting that's both incredibly painful and toxic. While some folks label bullet ants as dangerous, it's worth noting that their painful sting can last for up to 24 hours after contact. This is due to a toxin called ponerotoxin. This nasty stuff has a unique ability to latch onto pain receptors, and it's the reason you can suffer for an entire day after this bite. Number 7. Tarantula Hawk Wasp Many people have a fear of insects, known as entomophobia. But for some spiders, the stakes are even higher, especially when the tarantula hawk comes into play. Though they're called tarantula hawks, they're actually a specific type of spider wasp belonging to the Pepsis genus. These wasps can grow up to four inches long and they're known to live solitary lives. The name tarantula hawk makes sense because these wasps like to hunt tarantulas, which are often much larger than they are. While adult tarantula hawks feed on nectar, it's the females that hunt spiders to feed their offspring. They sting the tarantula with a curved, sharp stinger and inject venom that paralyzes it, but keeps it alive. The immobilized spider is then either stored in its own burrow or dragged into the wasp's nest, where the female lays a single egg on it. The objective here is essentially a ready-made meal. When the egg hatches, the larva burrows into the still-alive spider's stomach and starts feeding. Yeah, so this thing is basically Satan. The larva begins by consuming hemolymph, the spider's equivalent of blood, before moving on to its tissues. Eventually, the young tarantula hawk matures and leaves its spider host behind. So, as a human, if you get stung, what happens? Well, you probably won't fall into a death paralysis, but it is the second most painful sting known to man, so ouch! Number 6. Sydney Funnel Web Spider The funnel web spider's pretty notorious in Australia, often grabbing headlines. 
This hefty spider can have legs that span up to two inches. What makes its bite particularly threatening is the orientation of its fangs, which point downward instead of sticking out horizontally. And when it bites, you know the funnel web injects a considerable amount of venom into its target. These spiders prefer an underground lifestyle, and they can startle folks who aren't careful when reaching into cold, dark, or damp places outdoors. Their burrows usually feature a unique silk funnel, which acts as a sort of tripwire. The moment this spider senses any vibration, it's up and ready, poised to bite any passerby. Number 5. Red Harvester Ant Harvester ant stings are known for causing pain, pain, uh, and pain. Unlike honeybees, which have stingers that break off, some harvester ant species can sting multiple times. Their attack is a two-step assault, actually kind of similar to fire ants. First, they latch onto their target using their mandibles. Then they pivot around the site, stinging and injecting venom multiple times. The red harvester ant is native to the dry regions of the southwest. It's particularly potent. People often mistake them for fire ants, but they're not related, and their sting packs a way stronger punch. While they don't usually invade buildings, their nests are often located close to homes, earning them the label of urban pests. Aside from the red harvester ant, which is generally not aggressive, harvester ants can deliver an exceptionally painful sting, if they feel threatened. The venom of the maricopa harvester ant, for instance, consists of a mix of amino acids, peptides, and proteins, along with a key alkali poison that chemically signals other ants to join in on the attack. It's kind of like a call to arms, bringing in the crew to help destroy whatever poor creature has fallen foul of the ants. Children, the elderly, and those with certain health conditions should consult a doctor of stone. Even in healthy individuals, the pain from a harvester ant sting can last for up to four hours, with the potential for lingering pain and swelling much beyond that. Number 4. Amazon Giant Centipede You'll find centipedes in various parts of the world, but the Amazonian giant Scolopendra giganti really steals the show. These are the world's largest centipedes. Prepare to feel a shiver down your spine and look at your feet to make sure one's not there, as I tell you, they grow to over 12 inches long. And as you might imagine, an over 12 inch long centipede has quite the appetite. What sets these giants apart is their knack for hunting bats. A 2005 study documented S. giganti preying on three specific types of bats in Venezuela. Mormoops megalophila, Pterodontis davi, and Leptonipterus curassoe. It's pretty impressive considering bats are agile and way bigger than the centipedes themselves. But these critters have developed two remarkable techniques for taking down their winged meals. Let's check them out. Much like cave-dwelling spiders, S. giganti has a preference for cave habitats. They're particularly skilled at scaling cave walls and ceilings to reach roosting bats. They're so adept, they can even catch bats mid-flight by dangling from the cave ceiling and snatching any up that come too close. Their potent venom is another asset, effectively subduing large prey. These centipedes have a unique adaptation. Their first pair of legs near their head are modified into poison claws, pincer-like appendages used to inject venom into their prey. So, how dangerous is the world's largest centipede to humans? Well, the short answer is, yeah, they're dangerous, they're hazardous, but they're probably not lethal. A bite can cause pain, swelling, tissue damage, and yeah, more pain on top of all that other pain. However, it is unlikely to be fatal unless it's compounded by other health issues or allergies. Number 3. Black Widow Spider Latrodectus mactans is a venomous spider from the genus Latrodectus. It's also called the Southern Black Widow or just the Black Widow. Females can be told apart from males by their striking black and red coloring and the fact that they may eat their partner after mating. It seems a little strange, but it gives you an idea of the intensity of this spider. This species only lives in North America. On the other hand, the venom rarely healthy people. The Black Widow was first written about by Johann Christian Fabricius in 1775, even though the native people who lived there were already scared of it. The Southern Widow comes from the southeastern U.S., but you can find it as far north as Ohio and as far west as Texas. In northwestern eastern United States and southeastern Canada, you can find the Northern Black Widow. Their areas overlap a bit. Black Widow spiders eat many kinds of bugs, but when fire ants are around, they're likely to eat them the most. Let's just say they like spicy food. The much smaller males can't envenomate humans, only adult females can. 
This is because their shell is ray, which are hollow, needle-like mouth parts that shoot venom, are longer than the males and can reach people. Even in fully grown females, the amount shot varies, and they're not as dangerous as their scary image makes them sound. Number 2. Puss Caterpillar So, the Puss Caterpillar might remind you of Cousin It from the Addams Family, tempting you to touch its soft and furry appearance. But beware, hidden beneath that fuzz are harmful spines that can inflict intense, long-lasting pain. It's one of the most venomous caterpillars in the US. It can be found munching on leaves from New Jersey to Florida and even as far west as Texas. Encounters often happen when these critters fall from trees or when people are handling leaves next to their homes. The level of pain felt from a sting can vary from person to person, but for some, the venom can be particularly hazardous. According to the National Capital Poison Center, if you're unfortunate enough to get stung, you should first remove the embedded hairs using tape. Afterwards, gently wash the afflicted area with soap and water. To alleviate itching or discomfort, you can apply some hydrocortisone cream or a homemade paste of baking soda and water. And then probably think twice about approaching anything cuddly in the insect world next time around. Number 1. Bald-Faced Hornet Bald-Faced Hornets are a bit of a misnomer. They're actually a type of black and white yellow jacket wasp. They get their name from the unique black and white patterns on their heads and abdomen tips. Adult hornets are between a half to five eighth of an inch long, with the queen being the largest at about three fourths of an inch. Generally, they aren't too threatening to humans if their nests are away from busy areas. However, if you encounter a nest near a pathway or doorway, watch out. They could defend their homes aggressively. A sting from a bald-faced hornet can be pretty painful. Unlike other insect stingers, their stingers are smooth, which allows them to sting multiple times. While stings are often more alarming than actually dangerous, they can certainly be pretty uncomfortable. If you're stung, the first thing to do is remove the stinger using something flat, like a credit card or your fingernail. Wash the area with soap and water, and then apply a cloth-covered cold pack to the affected area, alternating 10 minutes on and 10 minutes off for up to an hour. Over-the-counter pain relievers like aspirin can also help manage the discomfort. Have you ever been stung by an insect? How'd it feel? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.